Good evening and welcome to the APIs and Government program for Thursday, May the 12th, 2022. I am Government brings you the latest on government's plans, programs, policies and projects. I am Bath Northway. Just ahead on this evening's program, we bring you part one of an exciting interview with the Minister of Tourism, the Honorable Carlos James. This country continues to do its part to implement the Economic Partnership Agreement, the EPA. Minister of Finance clarifies issues related to the value-added tax. And Dr. Betty Adams discusses the importance of an infection control policy. These stories are more just ahead, but first let's join Janice St. Philip for Newswatch. Good evening, I am Denise St. Philip. This is Newswatch. 1,714 students began to write the Caribbean Primary Exit Assessment Examinations today. 864 males and 850 females will set the exams. The students will be tested in four subject areas, mathematics, social studies, language arts, and science. The Caribbean Primary Exit Assessment, CPEA, is a regional assessment exam offered by the Caribbean Examinations Council. We believe that they were prepared for this exam. They've been doing their best under the circumstances, COVID-19, the volcanic eruption. So we know that our students can and will succeed. Well, I'm, I'm overwhelmed, you know, you have been anticipating this day so long, so, and I trust that you will do good. You know, I'm very confident in him, that you will do good. Hi, my name is Ken Antoine, and I feel like the exam was easy because our teacher taught us how to do some of this stuff, and it does pop back up easy, and we did some past test papers, and like, it popped back up. The Public Health Department, with help from the Solid Waste Unit, has begun removing a number of derelict vehicles from public roads. This forms part of their commitment in ensuring public safety, as these vehicles are not only unsightly, but pose a number of threats to pedestrians and become breeding ground for rodents. We stick out some vehicle, some derelict vehicle in this particular area. Uh, Montrose walk a piece, and we give them a specific time to remove the derelict vehicles. And we are back. We are back to, to take them up and dispose, dispose of them. Once the time is expired, we are removing the derelict vehicle. Once the owner of the vehicle do not take any action, we will take them and dispose of them at Diamond at the, the landfill. So here, here is, if I could point out the this car, the really car, it was stickered on the third of the fifth, the third of the fifth, and it was given six days, and the six days have already expired. So we are going to move this and take it to the, the landfill. St. Vincent and the Grenadines joins the rest of the world in commemorating International Nurses Day today. This year's celebration is especially noteworthy as nurses reflect on their work and challenges over the past two years battling the COVID-19 pandemic. Here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the Ministry of Health held a series of activities leading up to today, including an awards ceremony to pay tribute to the outstanding work of nurses and doctors in the community health services. The theme for International Nurses Day 2022 is Nurses, a voice to lead, invest in nursing, and respect rights to secure global health. Fisher folk will have an opportunity to retool themselves as there are plans to facilitate training from skilled persons to local fisher folk. Because you could have the best business plan, Winsbert. You could have the best boat, the best engine, hook and line, if you can't fish. You just can't fish. 
And what we are going to do, and I want for persons to, to hear me on this one, because I've been in this business long enough not to know where I'm going to be critiqued. We have to bring skilled persons from outside St. Vincent and the Grenadines with the knowledge and the expertise to have that technology transfer. But I know how the talk show radio really going to put it. That's how we bring people from overseas. I hear you talking it. From overseas. To come fish out all we fish. And put them on kisses to your boat. But that's not the situation. And we can't be insular. St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We have technical resources here. But wisdom will dictate that what you don't have in yourself, you have to go out there and get. The Agriculture Minister added that while work is being done to ensure that fisher folk are able to earn a livelihood from the blue economy, work is also being done to preserve marine resources. We are going to continue to work with CRFM and the Fisheries Division for technical advice. We have a total ban in this country on the harvesting of turtles. We have a total ban on the harvesting of the parrot fish and the sea eggs. We are one of the first in the entire CARICOM region to not only have a lower limit on the size of lobsters that can be caught but next season there's also going to be a maximum size and as Erdley rightly said being a man who is forward thinking that as we await the results of the recent survey which was concluded there may be very soon the establishment of a conk season here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The minister was speaking at the signing of a Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, between the KCCU and the government of SVG. The MOU form is an important element of the fleet expansion program and will give fisher folk interested in purchasing larger fishing vessels access to finance. Thanks for viewing. We've come to the end of another segment of Newswatch. I am Janice St. Philip. Stay tuned as the API's Iron Government program continues with Bob and Oliver. Welcome to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We've just landed at the Argyle International Airport. It's 5 p.m. local time. In preparation for arrival, we remind you to keep physical distance and avoid congregating in the aisles when deplaning. On behalf of the flight deck crew and Captain Noel of Flight 549, thank you for choosing American Airlines for your travels today. We hope you've had a pleasant flight and look forward to seeing you again soon. Somebody take me home. to St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the most beautiful, diverse Caribbean destination. From white sand beaches and beautiful sailing waters in the Grenadines to our pristine black sand beaches on mainland St. Vincent. Take a journey with me. Let's discover St. Vincent and the Grenadines.
Welcome back. You're watching the APIs and Government. Following an announcement by Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez on August 14, 2020, regarding amendments to the Marriage Act of St. Vincent and the Grandines, the Ministry of Tourism and Tourism stakeholders who have been asking for the changes are delighted. Tamara Barrow sits down with the Minister of Tourism and other stakeholders to discuss what this means for them and the country as a whole. We bring you part one of the interview this evening and I invite you to view part two on Monday morning on the API's live morning show, Morning SVG at 6 a.m. Summer 2022 is just around the corner and you know what that means. Weddings, weddings and more weddings and recently St. Vincent and the Grenadines made some amendments to their Marriage Act which makes coming to St. Vincent and the Grenadines to have your dream wedding much easier. I am sitting with the company of some distinguished gentlemen and ladies who are hot and ready to talk about the impact of the changes of the Married Act to our destination here. On my left is the Minister of Tourism, Honorable Carlos James. Looking lovely in the, in the purple in the middle is Miss Bianca Porter. She's the chairman of the Tourism Authority in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Then we have Miss Kim Halbesh. You know that name. <laughs> she is the president of the Tourism, the Hotel and Tourism Association in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And finally, on my right, we have Mr. Alexis John. He's the proprietor of Fan Fair events that offers the destination wedding packages. And we are going to discuss today the Marriage Act and the impact to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Minister, I want to start with you. Um, could you tell us a little bit more about the Marriage Act and what the amendments were? We, we have been waiting quite a long time to stay, when I say we did, collectively the stakeholders within the tourism sector um, for the amendments to the Marriage Act, which facilitates having same day destination weddings in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Um, one of the challenges we've had as an island, because we're a multi-island state, is the usual movement from the Grenadines, for instance, persons who are coming, uh, staying on, on PSV, Palm Island, Miro, Union Island, Cano and Mustique, um, Beckway, they will have to travel to St. Vincent um, to go through the usual process of an application. Um, going to the Attorney General's Chambers, the, Regis the Registrar General, the High Court to have their applications processed. Um, as you know with the scheduling of, of ferries and, 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 and air travel, that can take up to two or three days. Um, getting on an island, the, the application process itself and getting a flight or transportation back to the island. When, when you literally have a few days vacation for a destination wedding and honeymoon, um, you're asking guests to travel with you, sometimes it's a bit difficult. Um, so we lose a lot of time um, where that's concerned. Unlike on most of the other Caribbean islands where it's a single island, everything can be processed and facilitated um, at the same time. Um, we have had the challenges. So one of the, the measures which we sought to amend here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines um, is the marriage regulation as it relates to the signatory of the Registrar General. Um, so now we can have a notary public um, who can sign in place of the Registrar General. The Act will facilitate that through um, the amendment to the regulations. Therefore, it means that someone who's a notary public on Union Island um, or Beckway, for instance, or Canawan can facilitate the signature of the applicants there on island as opposed to coming to, to the mainland. Um, one of the other amendments, which is, which is a big feature as well, and I think there were some changes some years ago, but it's really to facilitate same-day um, applications whereby someone had to fly into the destination, waited a period of 72 hours or you know three days before they can actually um, qualify for an application process to, to, to take place. And basically you can come today and have this application process. Um, filled out, signed on the same day and you get married in the evening or the afternoon and that's one of the things um, we, we're looking at doing in terms of the ease of doing business um, in St. Vincent and Vernon's within the tourism sector. The, the other component which has to be done through the delegation of powers in terms of um, a specific regulation which has to also um, be, be triggered 
will be a situation where usually the, the, the application requires a payment of fees and who can collect those fees and then it's usually in the form of stamps and therefore it means you have to come up to St. Vincent, go to the registry, purchase the stamps, take it um, to, from the Treasury to the registry and then the Attorney General's Chambers. Again, an exhausting exercise if you're doing a same day or a short notice um, uh, wedding. What we're hoping to do is to have those powers delegated from the Governor General to revenue officers on um, the respective islands on Union or Mustique or Bequia or Canawan, who can then facilitate the collection of the fees and the processing of the application. So it's a full complete process which can take place within the Grenadines. And um, we're hoping that as we facilitate this, we're able to essentially um, get a lot more persons coming to the destination uh, because that was one of the challenges and one of the hurdles which we had to um, navigate when it comes to destination weddings. And a lot of the stakeholders, stakeholders particularly in the, the Grand Rapids, raised uh, some concerns with it and we, we sought very um, long and hard consultations with all of the stakeholders as to how we can um, facilitate that. And they've been doing this for quite a number of um, months leading into the, the, the application process. So essentially we can really facilitate um, destination weddings literally within one day on a, any given Grenadine Islands, um, providing that there's an old republic and a revenue officer who's able to facilitate the transactions on that specific island. Um, it's not just a measure which can be used for um, persons who are flying to St. Vincent as well, persons who in the Grenadines who may want to have um, the application process completed in the Grenadines without traveling to mainland for a short notice wedding or a same day wedding, they can also take advantage of this opportunity. So it's again decentralizing the services, but also we, we're, we're cognizant that the destination wedding market, um, it, it's, it's a massive billion dollar industry, which um, St. Vincent was once a leading um, destination, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, when it comes to wedding destinations within the tourism sector. And we really want to get back at the top of that table and that we are um, eager to, 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 to move with these legislative amendments. We got them passed in the Parliament and it's now for the, the relevant authorities to um, go through the process of the implementation so we can um, have this realised uh, within a very short time and hopefully in the winter season coming we can see a lot more persons flying to St Vincent and the Grenadines to be a part of this um, shared experience of our beautiful scenery but also to spend um, their hard-earned money um, and also to, to, to boost the, the tourism sector. Miss Port, I want to come to you on the beautiful young island which is famous for destination weddings. How many wed des um, destination weddings you would say that you guys do per year? And how with the changes now would you see that impacting the amount of weddings we have here on Young Island? Well, the thing is, we, we really weren't negatively impacted by the, um, the legislation as it stood, simply because we are a stone throw from mainland St. Vincent. But I, I still feel that this, this, is, this is a very positive move for the destination. So in terms of destination weddings, uh, we, we do about four or five per year and certainly there's scope for, for uh, hosting more destination weddings here. You know, when you think firstly about airlift, there's more airlift now and some persons can't even get away for a week. Uh, they can fly in on a Wednesday, fly out on a Saturday and certainly they can get married because of the quick turnaround time. So that's a big plus for us and you know, when you think about persons coming and we have 29 accommodations, reserving all 29 accommodations, that's revenue for us. It's revenue for the government because we're collecting that. We're connect collecting the uh, CRL, the Climate Resiliency Levy. We're employing uh, sometimes additional staff. So it's, it's of great economic benefit to the country. There's departure tax, whether it's included in the ticket or pay by the airport. So uh, it's, it's really a big plus for not only the resort, but also for the country. And uh, I, I, I always think of, we, you know, we're in this together. So of course, I think of my neighbors, those in Petit St. Vincent, Palm Island, 
Canada One Mustique and I'm really happy for them because I worked both in the southern, southern and the northern Grenadines and when persons book to stay in the Grenadines, they're looking for the Grenadines experience, they're not looking for the mainland experience. So I know how valuable their time is and traveling up to St. Vincent for a day and sometimes for a night because of the lack of flights, same day flights to return City Union Island was always problematic and so it 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 sort of put a spoke in the wheels for uh, properties like Petty St. Vincent and Palm Island and I can see now that they will will have their reps in the UK and Europe and in the United States and Canada start to focus on weddings again and they will start to market to the wedding and honeymoon market because come what may persons are always getting married and they look for exotic locations and St. Vincent of the Grenadines certainly is one of those locations so I think what we need to do from our end now as, as a destination is to basically market what we what we have to offer yes continue to do that and of course romance is one of our niche markets weddings and honeymoons but then uh, we also have to the tourism authority that is now has to ensure that all stakeholders travel agents tour operators etc uh, uh, go on to social media as well to ensure that everyone is aware that it is easy to get married in St. Vincent and the Grenadines because make no mistake uh, islands like St. Lucia and Jamaica they they market themselves as uh, very romantic St. Lucia they feel they're the most romantic location in the Caribbean but we certainly I know in terms of beauty and in terms of our people we can certainly compete on an even playing field with them. Don't go away, Iron Government continues after the break. Have you registered for your COVID-19 digital vaccination certificate yet? Vincentians who received their COVID-19 vaccine in St. Vincent and the Grenadines are encouraged to apply for their vaccine certificate. If you are planning on traveling or planning to attend upcoming fully vaccinated events, here are two steps you can follow. Step one, send an email to vaccinecertificate at gov.bc with the following documents. One, your COVID-19 vaccination card. Two, photo identification card. Three, passport size photo. This is optional. Step two, be patient and allow for a maximum of 72 hours for the information to be forwarded to your email. Don't forget to check your spam or junk mail. For more information, call 784-451-2183 or the COVID-19 hotline, 784-534-4325. Your health, a shared responsibility. Welcome back. Another important effort to strengthen this country's capacity in meeting the requirements for access to carry forum and EU markets was recently launched. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade are doing their part to efficiently implement the Economic Partnership Agreement, EPA, and its components for maximum benefits for all stakeholders in St. Vincent and Grenadines. The API's Halajan tells us more about the latest project. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade spearheaded the launch of the CARIFORUM EU Economic Partnership Agreement, EPA, and the CARICOM Single Market and Economy, CSME, Standby Facility for Capacity Building Projects for St. Vincent and the Grenadines on Tuesday, May 10, 2022, at the NIS Conference Room. Under the 11th Economic Development Fund, EDF, the grant of just over 714,000 EC dollars, with additional counterpart funds of approximately 360,000 EC dollars to be provided by the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, 
will finance the two projects that are expected to broaden the knowledge base and formalize the scope of operations of exportable service providers, making them more viable for entry to CARIFORUM and EU markets, and develop a new framework for standardization of livestock production and trade. Speaking at the launch ceremony, Senator the Honorable Kesal Peters, Minister of State with Responsibility for Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, outlined how the target areas were chosen and the ministries responsible for implementing them. Following the launch of the standby facilities, the ministry commenced consultation with key stakeholders to identify implementation gaps in the EPA and the CSME arrangements and measures that could be used to enhance benefits for St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The stakeholders included the Ministry of Agriculture, the IICA, St. Vincent and the Grenadines Bureau of Standards, the Ministry of National Security, the Ministry of Tourism and Culture, and the National Qualification Department. Subsequently, the proposals were developed in collaboration with the stakeholders. A total of 250,840 European dollars has been granted to the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and the government will be providing counterpart funds of 126,310 euros. The funds will finance two projects, namely the National Standardization and Certification of Exportable Services Providers, which focuses on the services sector development and addresses the certification of individuals and operators in the various areas targeting the musical performance, just as we heard a while ago, community cultural performers, spa operators, household domestics, and security guards. This project will be implemented by the Ministry of Education and will be spearheaded by my brother, the Honorable Curtis King. The second project, the Food Safety Certification System for Livestock Production and Trade in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, includes initiatives to enhance capacity to meet international trade, sanitary and phytosanitary requirements. This project will be implemented by the Ministry of Agriculture under the guidance of my brother, the Honorable Sabutu Caesar. Given the contemporary challenges facing St. Vincent and the Grenadines in light of the adverse economic impact of the COVID-19 pandemic and the explosive eruption of the La Soufrière volcano, today's launch of the EPA and CSME projects are timely. These projects are geared towards assisting the private sector to enhance productivity and competitiveness thereby attaining a strong and sustainable external trade and stimulating economic growth and sustainable development. Daniel Best, Director of Projects at the CDB, underscored the importance of education as a driver for development and noted that it is for this reason that projects such as those being launched are chosen to promote development within the region. Education is a critical enabler of social and economic development and the source of human capital formation. By educating our citizens, we can create an ever-expanding pool of productive Caribbean citizens with the requisite knowledge, skills, attitudes, and values necessary to lead purposeful and productive lives in an internationally competitive environment. The bank views investment in education as critical to the strengthening of mechanisms for, for full participation in the development process. Therefore, the implementation of the National Standardization and Certification of Exportable Services Providers Project will assist the government in addressing one of the main development challenges in education. That is, enhancing the quality and relevance of education to better align with existing demand for skills and improve employability and employment levels. The Food Safety Certification System for Livestock Production and Trade Project will also impact citizens' lives and livelihoods. Improved food safety systems, which is the outcome of the project, will lead to greater market penetration expansion, national and regional, economic growth, poverty reduction, and decreased unemployment in rural communities. Further, 
Increased knowledge of best practices will lead to an increased demand for quality goods and improved standards of living. During his address, Minister of Education, the Honorable Curtis King, indicated the target sectors for development and just how his ministry will achieve the project's objectives. This project is intended to address through a grant of 220,991 euros, three major areas. Firstly, the development of the spa sector while preparing and positioning the sector for greater exportability, both at the regional and international levels. Secondly, the development of a cadre of certified musical professional and a system of continued certification for increased professionalism and to access national, regional, and international markets. And this will be facilitated through the establishment of a national lead body for certification and the increased standardization of the cultural services through the Department of Culture. And finally, the enhancement of the capacity of other CSME approved vocations, such as security guards, as well as domestics, to access regional markets. And this will be done through two main set of activities. One, the training of assessors and facilitators to certify stakeholders. And two, the certification of a cadre of national security guards and domestics. I therefore wish to put on record the government's appreciation to the Caribbean Development Bank the European Union, CARICOM, and the OECS, who in this case serve as development partners in our development agenda. We continue to say thanks for your collaboration with us to ensure that we achieve some of our targets. Speaking of the EU's continued commitment to addressing the various impediments to trade within CARIFORUM states, Regional Cooperation and Trade Support Team Leader of the European Union Delegation in Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean, Felipe de la Mota, said that both projects are expected to significantly impact economic resilience and growth in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Now, we can all agree that the initiatives uh, like these two being launched today are proving to be vital to boosting regional economies to growth. And that continue to, as they continue in particular to come to terms with um, the impact of the COVID pandemic, uh, the volcanic eruption, and other external shocks in these very turbulent international times. Now, the standby facilities were created specifically to support uh, Curry Forum member states in the region in the effective implementation of the Economic Partnership Agreement, the EPA, with the European Union, and of the Caribbean Single Market and Economy, the CSME. They were designed to provide assistance in uh, addressing the various impediments to trade that may, that may be unique to each country. Now, this EPA, this European uh, Economic Partnership Agreement, which was signed in 2008, goes beyond a typical trade agreement that provides duty-free and quota-free access to the EU markets. But it also contains commitments on trade and services, investment, trade-related issues such as competition policy procurement, IP rights, and as well as sustainable development aspects. Um, lastly, I really want to underscore the commitment that the European Union maintains in its partnership to the region, especially in support to beneficial integration of the CARIFORUM member states into the world economy. And in particular, I want to reiterate the European Union's firm and strong uh, support to the St. Vincent Grenadines government in its uh, pursuit of the development agenda uh, Minister outlined earlier. We really look forward to the implementation of these projects uh, and wish you uh, the best of luck and really uh, the benefits it will bring to the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines.
The standby facility is a Euro 8.75 million resource managed by the Caribbean Development Bank, which offers opportunities to 15 Caribbean economies to grow trade, deepen integration and economic involvement, impact competitiveness, market access and exports by implementing targeted projects in thematic areas. For the API, I'm Hala John. The government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, through the Ministry of Public Service, Consumer Affairs and Sports, is pleased to announce its Employees Assistance Program. The EAP aims to enable a positive work environment and safeguard the holistic health and well-being of all employees while increasing productivity and improving national output. The EAP unit would like all public servants to know how valued they are to the country. The unit is located within the St. Vincent Cooperative Building, Jerose Place, Kingstown. Contact us at telephone number 485-6912 or email eap.mps at gov.vc We care about you. Read, learn, grow The children are the future Help them read, learn, grow Early reading is the key So help them read, learn, grow Let's show them how much fun it is To read, learn, grow So parents, you play your part First and foremost, reading from so young is advantageous Link with the teachers, working hand in hand is a must Just 10 minutes of your child reading to you is a plus Get fun books, make reading priority When children read, they are able to learn And the more they learn, the more they grow So parents help the kids read, learn, grow Reading is fun, kids have to know Read, learn, grow The children are the future Help them read, learn, grow So parents you play your part. This message is brought to you by the OECS USAID Early Learners Program, funded by United States Agency for International Development. For more information, log on to www.oecs.org slash ELP. Welcome back. In response to the opposition's claims in Parliament on an issue of value-added tax and the amount government collected, Minister of Finance, Honorable Camille Gonsalves, clarified the error and falsehood. The Honorable Member for East Kingston repeated in this Honorable House statements that he made on the air in an entertainment forum as if the fact that they weren't challenged in an entertainment forum validates them for regurgitation in this House, Madam Speaker. And I don't begrudge him any conversations on any entertainment forums. Every, all of us must be entertained, but I have great faith Madam Speaker, in the education revolution. And I know that when people hear things sometimes, they say, I don't know if I'm being misinformed, I don't know if I'm being misled, I don't know if it's sleight of hand, I don't know if it's a factual inaccuracy, but I don't sound right. And the Honorable Member came in here again with verbal sleight of hand and some numerical sleight of hand to suggest, Madam Speaker, that failure to collect VAT is approaching 50%. In fact, he said, I won't go so far as to say reduce it from 16% to 8%. But, you know, you could go there. Because, Madam Speaker, he quotes from this VAT audit report, apparently got as far as page one of the report, where it says that, and I'm going to repeat his quote, However, it was noted that the government had recorded a total decline and so on. Furthermore, the VAT accounts receivable was recorded at $68.8 million at the end of fiscal year 2016, which is almost equivalent to the year's total collection. Ah, they only collect half and half is in arrears. No, Madam Speaker, that is not what it says. It says from 2007 when VAT began to know the total arrears add up to this amount. Not that we're collecting half and not collecting half. That is absolutely untrue, Madam Speaker. And it was repeated here, Madam Speaker, there was a question yesterday. Let me show you how I know the Honorable Member for East Kingston knows better when he says these things. 
There was a question before this Honorable House, Madam Speaker, for the fiscal outturn. The Honorable Member for East Kingstown asked me, the, the Prime Minister, I have the new fiscal outturn, but I'll quote the one that I read for the end of the first quarter. I told the Honorable Member, Madam Speaker, that by the end of the first quarter, we collected $27.8 million in VAT. We collected $27.8 million in VAT. That means on the local VAT. So if we're collecting only half of our VAT, Madam Speaker, that means really we build 50-something million dollars in VAT in the first quarter of this year. We never collect more than $100 million in VAT, Madam Speaker, on the domestic VAT. So how in the first three months we don't reach $50 million? It doesn't make sense. It defies logic, and the Honorable Member knows it, Madam Speaker. I'll give you the numbers. I'll give this Honorable House the numbers, Madam Speaker. Because the fact of the matter is that the $100 million in arrears in this country is against over a billion dollars of VAT collected since VAT, was, since VAT began. Not 50%, Madam Speaker, 10%. And the number is declining every year, but we come on the radio program and we say it's only half the VAT they're collecting. And boy, since it's only half they're collecting, imagine we could have built the whole parliament with the half of VAT that they didn't collect last year. Not true, Madam Speaker. Completely false. I'll give you the numbers, Madam Speaker, and I want the media to listen to it. I'll give them year by year if necessary. Yes, as you said, Madam, Honorable Prime Minister. Madam Speaker, this, I start with the total number from 2007. From 2007 to today, Madam Speaker, the end of 2021. Total VAT assessed. Total VAT. 1,202,295,313. So from VAT start to now, we have assessed $1.2 billion of VAT. VAT payments, 1,095,540,000. VAT arrears, again, Madam Speaker, from the beginning of time in St. Vincent and the Grenadines for VAT. 106 million dollars. So we have collected 1 billion and there's 100 million outstanding. How that turn 50 percent? In which mathematical formula is that 50 percent? But it is repeated over and over again and it gains some sort of a currency that the VAT people are so inept, so incompetent, so mismanaged, so understaffed that they can only collect half of the VAT that they assess and it is false. Don't go away. Iron Government continues after the break. Tourism has many benefits to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. It creates growth and a boost in economic activities, infrastructure development, job creation, entrepreneurship, and is a source of foreign exchange earnings. Supermarkets and vendors, bars, restaurants, taxis, tour guides, hotels, service providers, and many more all benefit directly from income gained through the tourism industry. Taxes collected from visitors to our country help St. Vincent's economy and its growth. Tourism is everyone's business. Live it, love it, embrace it. Tourism is everyone's business. Yeah. Live it, love it, embrace it. Diabetes is among the top three leading causes of death. Are you living with diabetes? If so, you may be at risk for developing complications, especially during this COVID pandemic. Let's tackle this problem by complying with taking your medication, increasing your physical activities, increasing eating a balanced and nutritious diet, checking your feet as foot care is important, and contacting your healthcare provider. Remember, diabetes can lead to blindness, amputation and numerous harmful and life-threatening effects. Protect yourself. Know your numbers. Hearts Movement SVG reminds you to love your body and treat it right. Your health is shared responsibility.
Welcome back. You are watching the APIs and government. Good oral health plays an important role in one's overall health. And Dr. Betty Jean Batiste Adams explains the importance of having an infection control policy. My name is Dr. Betty Jean Batiste Adams. I work at the Georgetown Dental Department. I am the district dental dentist there. I presented today on formulating a, an infection control policy for the dental department. It's important that this piece of documentation basically comes to the fore because we need to be able to be on the same level throughout the island as to how we manage infection control, how we manage any kind of occupational health and safety of our staff and to make sure that patients do not leave our care with any kind of acquired uh, diseases or any acquired um, nosocomial infections from us. We need to make sure that we don't get from them and neither do they get from us. And it's important that people within the dental staff know their roles. The participants today definitely knew of the importance of having such a document, such a policy. They know that it is high time that we put something together because we need to have that kind of guidance and, and standards put in place for us to follow. It's, it's been far too long that, you know, sometimes we're not too sure where to go, how to do. I mean, everybody gets that infection control because when you come into the, the system, you get to learn what should be done within the infection control part of it. But there are other policies that we always need to go into and learn. There are always new things coming up about. We just had to deal with, and we're not even finished dealing with COVID-19. And there was a lot to learn as to how we should manage the, the cases, how we should manage ourselves if we got it, what we should do, how we should work. It was something new that a lot of us were not too sure of and had to, to cope with. So instead of always, every time something comes about, we need to f figure out how things work. If we have measures in place where if something comes abo uh, about, we know who to go to, how to handle it, have our, our continuous working workshops and, and educational sessions, then we could definitely move forward from there. So everybody, I think, is really willing and, and ready to see that change. Persons now would have to definitely see about one, what is mandatory in terms of vaccines. That was a, a, a really hot topic today because people needed to know that although as health professionals we get vaccines, they needed to know why we got it and what which vaccines would be mandatory to get, what ways that we would be dealing with occupational health and safety when we get hurt on the job, what we're supposed to do, what we should be putting in place in, in terms of, of, of occupational health and safety, and as well the standards and guidelines that would go that would cover the entire island for um, dentistry in terms of infection control. So really and truly, I think it was pretty, a pretty good session where they, they got that, what they, they needed to do, especially with the vaccines, whether Hep B, the varicella zoster, the MR for the gentlemen, the MMR for, for the ladies. They, they got, it was a, a learning session too because they got to ask many questions where that was concerned so that they knew what was necessary, those who did not know. And those who have not gotten their vaccines as yet, now they know that we have to get the ball rolling so that they are protected because we need to be protected so that we can give that service, that we need to give that quality service to, uh, to, the, to the public. So it's good when you can educate your people because with education, then you've empowered the individuals who have, who have been educated and they can take the ball rolling from there and they can continue the education process with our patients and they know exactly what they need to do and what they need to bring to the fore. The management of patients vaccinated or not vaccinated doesn't matter because when a patient comes to you in the dental department, you do not worry whether or not they have been vaccinated. You have to always see a patient 
as somebody who could give you something. So you make sure that you don yourself properly and that everywhere has been disinfected, it's clean, it's prepared for each patient who comes because it doesn't matter if they're vaccinated or not, you're not going to deny the, those patients care. That is not our mantra. We do not deny anybody care. And so you always make sure that you protect yourself and you get protection for those who are going to come. So if that individual is in any way sick, at least you have provided the barriers, whether it be chemical, physical, with you putting on your PPE, donning what you need to don, and making sure that after you've seen the patient, you clean down properly so that another patient who comes in will not be leaving with anything. So it's not a matter of if you're vaccinated or not, you wouldn't be seen, you would be seen, but we have to take the necessary protection and the necessary actions to make sure that nobody leaves our care with anything and we shouldn't be leaving the dental clinic with anything to take home to the family or out in into the community as a whole the tips are as always you you as a patient you do not try you need to remember that you are not the only one using the dental clinic so you try to keep as clean as possible at all times you wouldn't be putting your hand in your mouth spitting around the place using that same hand that you would have put into your mouth to touch the chair although the chair is going to be clean touch up the outside in the waiting room spit out in the waiting room you go to the bathroom if you find that you're dribbling because sometimes they're too heavy after for example getting anesthetic an individual may be heavy and may not be able to control a lot of what's happening with their mouth but then you you're aware sometimes that something's happening you go to the bathroom quickly to make sure that nothing not in your saliva and blood doesn't spill onto the chair next to you and if you realize that it happened you notify one of the dental staff so that they can clean it up so you make sure that you do not leave anything that would infect anybody else you do your your part as we do our part so that nobody leaves with any kind of cross contamination thank you so much you're welcome and that's how we end the apis and government thank you for viewing if you've missed any of our past programs you can catch these on our youtube or facebook pages at api svg also, don't forget to look out for Man in SVG on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. live on Facebook and YouTube. Until next time, I am Bob and Oliver. Do have a good evening.